yeah, it's taken 10 years to build, why would you try and even build an inland surf destination in Bristol? I always set out um, very early days as like, we want to work with local people, local businesses, get that expertise. I never expected to link one of my hobbies to work, to be honest. I, I thought it might have been a skate park if it ever did happen. I've never been involved in construction and engineering and designs, but the more times I kept saying to people, when people said, well, who are you working, who's doing your design work? Every time I said, oh, Hydrock are doing it, everyone just kept saying, great, you've got, you've got like the best people working on this. You know an incredible amount about every single element of this. I can walk out there and show you almost where every pipe lies, where every bit of concrete is. It's been a roller coaster of a journey because we've had, mainly from our side, we've had changes in technology along the way, you know, really challenging engineering puzzles out there. We were supplied with a load of information from the lake designers. Hydrock had to take that information, which was incredibly complicated, and try and simplify it into something that is then designed to be able to be built. Particularly with what we've got here in the surfing lake, the real critical thing is the bathymetry, so the shape of the lake bed. On each side of the lake, there's 263 different concrete panels and each one of those is different. So it's a different size, it has a different gradient, each corner is at a different elevation. That was, I'd say, the real biggie. That was the thing that if we didn't crack that, then we wouldn't be able to build a surf park. That's where the expertise of Hydro really came into its own. This is a small example of master planning because we're basically creating a whole site which didn't exist before. It's essentially like creating a little village because you have cable routes going everywhere, you have to get the right power to the right place and the fact that it comes all the way around the edge of the lake to the clubhouse. I look at this as a showcase hydro collaboration project. Jobs don't happen like this without significant input from each individual engineer talking to another engineer. They absolutely have got all the disciplines nailed down that we need and, and deliver it in a really you know, clear, coordinated fashion. Great, perfect. As a client, that's ideal. The relationships we've developed with the architect, the client and the project managers and the contractors have been so tight. Everyone knows who to talk to and everyone knows we're all in the same kind of new world. I got involved one year ago when we needed to do calculations basically for the retaining walls. The sort of dynamic forces that are applied to the retaining walls and the central foundation for the machine room, they're huge forces. So they gave us the maximum pressure on the wall and the minimum pressure on the wall and we tried to recognise the worst case scenario for the designs. What pleases me is is when I put my hands on the side of the walls and those waves pound it, you don't even feel any vibration through those walls. They're that robust. And I was absolutely expecting when we push big waves against those walls, like a breakwater down at the sea, that you would feel it like trembling, not a bit. Given we're so close to the Seven Estuary and the kind of level fields that we're around here, the groundwater's really high. From underneath the cove, we had some hydrogeological modelling done and they worked out as about 10 litres a second of water flow just under the cove itself. So we've got a separate system that collects all of that and drains it out into the local ditch network. And we've done that using a four mil piece of plastic and saved our client 800,000. If at a later date you need to empty the lake uh, without that weight of, of body of water on it, the whole thing would float like a concrete boat. Um, so that dewatering underneath is, is absolutely critical for the success of this. I mean, the quality of the wave is excellent. It's steep enough that you can generate speed to do good manoeuvres. In terms of actual learning and progression, it's phenomenal. So I can catch more waves in an hour here than I can all day sat in the sea. Another thing that made me really proud was that also my family and my friends in Italy, they recognised this project because they were talking about this in the Italian news. So it's like, wow, Alessia, so this is what you have done? Yes! <laughs> yeah, it's me! <laughs> That purpose which is around people's health and well-being and trying to leave the planet a better place um, just became such a driving drumbeat. The smiles we get out of people coming out of this lake every single day, if we're doing that, if that's the currency that we're, we're putting out there into the world, that's really exciting. <laughs>